Hi everyone, I am here today to take a look at comparing volumes. Comparing the volume of a cylinder to the volume of a cone. You can see these are both fairly similar in diameter and we're going to go through and calculate the volume of this, then we're going to calculate the volume of this and compare the two. So we're going to start off with the basics. Let's look what or how do we calculate the volume of a cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is there, volume equals pi r squared h. So let's break that down. V stands for volume. That little symbol there is pi, or we give it a value of 3.14. You can take it farther, but we're going to keep it to the 3.14. R is the radius, and h is the height. So since we're starting off with the volume of a cylinder, let's take the cylinder I have here. Now it's an empty cylinder. I have it and we'll use that later. But since for me, what I have to measure with is a measuring tape. So I'm going to look, and since it's a circle at the top, I'm going to go and take it and show you right through there. When I put it down, it comes right out at four inches. Now, to be clear, four inches isn't the radius. It's the diameter. So if we have a diameter of four inches, we can divide that in half and that'll give us a radius. So the radius of this circle at the top of the cylinder is two inches. Now we got to measure the height. Taking again, again or down here, and I also see that this is four inches. So it has an opening of four inches and a height of four inches. We've now calculated that our radius was two inches. So reviewing that written down for you so you can make sure you're seeing that I talk too fast. The diameter is four inches. We take half the diameter and we get the radius of two inches and the height of four inches. Now we gotta put it into our formula. Remembering the formula is volume equals pi r squared times h. So volume is pi times the radius squared times the height. Plugging those, we get volume equals 3.14 times two squared times four. We're going to start by doing those powers. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which now takes us to having the volume is 3.14 times 4 times 4. Getting the volume of our cylinder of 50.24 inches squared. So now we know what our cylinder is. This, if I were to fill it up, will hold 50.24 square inches of a liquid. Or anything else I hold up. We're sticking with liquid. Now, as I go through, I said we would also do the volume of a cone. So we're going to need all those same measurements from this cone. Lucky, we already know, it kind of fits almost perfectly on there. So it's probably going to be about the same. But in science, we always verify and double check. So I'm going to take my tape measure and again go down and I will see that if you look, it is a four inch, oops, I'm moving it a little bit. If you can see, it's four inch opening. So that gives it a diameter of four inches. We already discussed that the diameter isn't what we're looking for, but by dividing that diameter in half, we'll get the radius of the circular opening. All right, so that means we have a radius of two inches. This one's a little trickier, but I'm gonna do a little comparison. If I were to set these, and I can't set them down where you can see them, they're about the same height. If I set them on the table where I can see them, it's still, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be four inches, but let's measure again just to show you that I'm not making this up. So I go to here, and if I look right at the four inches, and sorry, it's kind of hard to have a table. It is going to be four inches. It goes right down there, and you can take it, and there we are. We are right at four inches, so it has a height of four inches. Now, we did discuss that there is a different formula but it's similar. So the volume of cone is V equals pi R squared H divided by three. Now in math, when we can do the order of operations, multiplication, division, it doesn't matter if I divide H before I do all this, or if I do it all at the end and just go in order. Take this times this times this, that. You just have to take the powers first. So quick review, going back, what does V equal? V equals volume. That symbol there is pi, and equals 3.14, and r equals the radius, which we're taking again 
That's half the diameter. All right, so again, V equals pi R squared H divided by three. We again measured, we did that together. We have a diameter of four inches and a radius of two inches. Half the diameter equals your radius. And that cone had a height of four inches. So now I'm going to need to plug that in. All right. And that will give me, again, my formula. V equals pi radius squared times height divided by three. Start plugging in my numbers. V equals 3.14 times two squared times four divided by three. As I said, the order of operations, we've got to do our powers first. So we get V equals 3.14 times four times four divided by three. If I multiply all those out first, I get 50.24. And then I divide it by three and it gives me 16.75 inches squared. And that gives us our volume of our cone. Significantly less than if we were to look at, and remember back to our volume of the cylinder. So it was 16.25 and 50.24. Hmm, that's weird. 50.24 is what we divided by three. That's where I want you to look at the relationship between the two formulas. We look at the top, the one here is the cone and this is the cylinder. The only difference in the formula is the cone is divided by three. So if we break that down and look at it, you can come to the conclusion that this volume times three, which we did, if we take the volume of the cylinder, let's look again, is 50.24 inches squared and the volume of the cone is 16.75. We compare our formulas. Volume of the cylinder, pi r squared times height, and the volume of the cone, volume equals pi r squared times height divided by three. So if I take that 16.5 and multiply it by three, I get 50.25. Now some of you, very observant, you saw the last time when I did the calculation of the volume of this, it was 50.24. Well, when you actually put it in the calculator, I did have to round, so I kind of had um, 50.24666666, so I rounded it at 50.25. So that kind of explains that discrepancy. But if I looked at the formulas and I compare it here, I should be able to take three of these and fill up one of these. Now, we don't take anything at face value in science. We always want to show. And as I try to show you a little bit more, well, that's not gonna work either. I'll show you, I luckily brought with me some handy dandy liquid to fill up. Now, there's always a percent error on anything in science. I can fill it up pretty well but I'm not gonna get it quite to the top because my computer's here. I don't wanna spill it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna see. If you look here, hmm, that's one. Pulling it over so I don't spill. That's two, and that looks about two thirds full. Now, I did say I didn't fill it all the way quite up, so that's gonna add up. So when you see that it's not gonna be quite at the top when I fill this third one, please take that into consideration. Also, I don't wanna have this completely full. I'm a klutz. I'm most likely going to spill it if I do that. So I'm filling up the third one. And as I said, each time I did it, but you can see, three cones equals one cylinder, wherever you are. Not only did we show you how to calculate area, how to relate area, 
or excuse me, volume, how to calculate volume, how to relate volume, but we also showed you that conservation. I don't know if you would guess that it'd take three of these, but if we look at the formulas, and then if we don't believe the formulas, we look at the math, you can see it's true. And then we took the actual visual, and I was able to show you that it was completely full. And it's pretty darn close. Try not to spill it over here. But if I can get a better shot for you, down there. There we go with our complete leaf, and that's the best side view. And I'm not picking up because I'm not going to spill it. Now, to kind of review, remember, when we're calculating, we actually are using almost the identical formulas for each of these. The cylinder is full. It has that full base, and I'm going to try to pour it back so I can... Oh, I just spilled everything. The cylinder has that full base. It's the radius squared, right, times pi times the height. If we take the two and we look at the other one, volume pi r squared height, but divided by three, that shows that this is one third. Now I can put it in and you can almost see where you could fill in the other two. Now it's a little bit different, but that's how we relate volume between the cylinder and the cone. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you got a little visual on how we use that math and how we can compare them. Look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day.